a lad insane, which we celebrated the 50th anniversary of with uh, pianist Mike Garson in April 73. Um, Diamond Dogs comes May 74. So in between is uh, Pin Ups, his covers album um, of the uh, beat songs, really, that, um, you know, the 64, 67 period of London, which inspired him and uh, he was involved in so much. Songs by the Pretty Things, Them, Floyd, Who, uh, Easy Beats, Yardbirds, Kinks, things like that. Um, uh, produced with uh, Ken Scott, who produces Iggy, worked with Bowie a lot. Must have been an interesting atmosphere. They recorded it at a chateau in France, and this was just after uh, Trevor Boulder and Woody Woodensy had been sacked on stage from the Ziggy Stardust tour, or the, the announcement of it was uh, sort of made on stage, and he hadn't told them before. Um, and uh, so uh, they was their services were dispensed with. And so for this, David Bowie asked Ainsley Dunbar to play the drums and Jack Bruce to play the bass, and Jack Bruce couldn't do it. So Trevor Boulder came and did it anyway. That must have been an interesting time in the studio, mustn't it? But uh, anyway, uh, Bowie's only covers out. He did do the odd cover. And, of course, um, uh, famously, the uh, cover is um, uh, the world's first supermodel, Twiggy, resting her head on Bowie's shoulder in sort of all that strange makeup and things, uh, which was taken in Paris while they were there for the recording sessions. Um, and uh, there's uh, a musical called Close Up, written by Ben Elton, at the, the Mernier Chocolate Factory in London, which is about Twiggy's life. And uh, so uh, we, we will talk about that, but we will also talk about that photo session for the uh, cover of Pinups with Twiggy. How cool is this? Um, uh, after we've heard the single from the album, originally a hit for the Merseys in 1966, Sorrow. <laughs> So that's David Bowie with Sorrow, which was a hit for the Merseys in 1966, although the original the year before, technically, by the McCoys, from Pin Ups. Um, these songs are the beat songs of 60s London that soundtracked Bowie's formative years and inspired him on that scene. Do the same songs mean the same for you, Twiggy? Oh, absolutely. I mean, number one, I can't believe it's 50 years Time flies <laughs> when you're having fun. Um, but yes, and actually, we've just co-produced a musical about my life, and we use Ben Elton, who wrote and produced it, um, uses a lot from that period, because obviously 1966 was when I was discovered. And it's been lovely because I've had so many letters from people saying it's taken them back to that era and what great music. It was great music in the 60s, wasn't it? And the 70s. So tell us about Close Up then, the musical. I mean, what's the arc of it? Where do we find the young Twiggy at the beginning of the show? Presumably still as Leslie. Or, or Twigs was your school nickname, wasn't it? It wasn't from school, actually. It was from a first boyfriend's brother who used to tease me about my skinny legs. Right. And it kind of stuck. And then when it was written about in the newspaper, that was me, Twiggy, for life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it hasn't done badly for me. It's done OK. So where do we find you at the start of the show? Well, it jumps around a bit, but it starts when I was born and it goes through to 1983 when I did a Gershwin musical on Broadway, My One and Only. But obviously the big part is the middle 60s. That's why yeah. we've got all these great songs from that period. And Ben Elton, who wrote and directed it, has very cleverly inserted them in... Uh, you know, specific moments. Yeah. But the, the audience love the song. I mean, it's so lovely to watch their reaction. Yeah, well, it's like a jukebox musical as well as telling your story, isn't it? Exactly. I mean, the swing in 60s, uh, you know, I was around in the 60s, I was born in the late 50s, but you were there at the very centre of it. But you were so young. It's staggering to think of it now. You were, what, 16, 17? So I wondered, was it a continuous round of parties and gigs or were you shielded from it at all? <laughs> were you being looked after? <laughs> I think that did go on. I, I, Quite honestly, I mean, number one, I was, as you say, I was incredibly young and incredibly kind of unsophisticated. And, you know, I, all I'd done was, you know, grow up lived with my family and gone to school which you know it was a very happy existence so when that whole thing and it kind of happened within like three weeks you know one week I was at school the next week you know I was being photographed because 
Leonard cut my hair. Yeah. And then a journalist saw it from the Daily Express and did this whole article saying, I named this girl Twiggy the face of 66. And that was the day in February 1966 when my life changed forever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, obviously since that time, we've been through all kinds of things and the Me Too movement and everything about sort of powerful men preying on, on, on young women. And how was it for you? Did you feel safe in that world at that time? Well, well, I did because I, I had the most wonderful dad, Norman, yeah. and um, he was from Bolton in Lancashire. and he was. I'm from Bolton. You're not. I am. Oh, that's wonderful. I Good love old him. Norman. You yeah. can always rely on guys from Bolton Twigs. But I agree with you. I said that to Peter Kay, who I worked yeah. with a few yeah. years back, because he's from Bolton. <laughs> he is. Uh, and I love him. He's so lovely. But my dad, he was really grounded. He was really sensible. And he was a wonderful dad because my mum had mental health issues, not badly all the time, but she went up and down. So my dad was my rock. Yeah. And so when this whole thing suddenly happened to me out of the blue, I had to get permission to leave school, obviously, because I was so young. Because I was being offered jobs in Paris and amazing work yeah. was coming yeah. through. And... Um, he said, if I stop you doing it, you may end up hating me. You know, this is a chance <laughs> in a million. He said, but the only reason I'll let you do this is if somebody always accompanies you to the studio. Because obviously being a man of a certain age, he kind of knew what can go on. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Which I was totally unaware of. I was, yeah. you know, I wasn't like 16 year olds today who are much more sophisticated and grown up and with the internet everything you know it was a much more innocent time in many ways so i always had a chaperone well done dad well so, done um, at what point did you, i mean obviously um you know we we jumped to pinups which is which is 50 years ago so a bit later but when did you first meet david bowie were you friends uh no never met him i was a huge fan and I can't remember, it was before I met him, but he did a, an amazing song called Driving Saturday. Exactly. Which I'm sure you know about. Yeah, Twig the Wonder Kid. Yeah, and I remember being in my kitchen and it came on the radio. <laughs> and it was like, oh my God, I think he said my name. And then I waited till it played again to the chorus, because it's in the chorus, she sighed like Twig the Wonder Kid. And I was like, oh my God, David Bowie <laughs> mentioned me in a song. I was so excited and I went out and bought it. Had anybody called you that before that, Twig the Wonder Kid? No. Did it catch on after that? Some people do use it, yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. you know, journalists and things. Right. Yeah, it's very flattering. It's it very is, nice. Yeah. So how did the photo come about? I was asked by Vogue, English Vogue, if I would do a cover photograph with David Bowie. And I said, absolutely, what a brilliant idea. And he was recording, it was probably pinups in Paris. So I went to Paris and they had this incredible makeup artist who decided to do our faces as masks. If you look mm. at the cover, you know, we've yeah. got a kind of mask painted. I mean, they're beautifully done. Yeah. And we did the photograph and had a lovely couple of days in Paris and went out to dinner. I mean, he was an extraordinarily amazing man. I mean, I was very excited to meet him and very nervous because, you know, when yeah. you're a big fan of somebody. Yeah. I mean, when he hit the scene in... Well, you would have been 10 years younger than me, probably. Yeah. Um, when was Ziggy Stardust? Was that late 60s? 72, wasn't it? So this like, then I would oh, be... 72. I would be, I would be 14, and it absolutely so, hit me between yeah. the eyes. Um, I you was know. 22 in 72. You know, I was... I just thought he... You know, he was so unlike anybody, and he was so extraordinary. So I was kind of in awe of meeting him, but he was such a sweet, lovely man incredibly bright, incredibly well-read. And very funny, I always found. People yeah, were always surprised. Lovely. Yeah, a really playful sense of humour, didn't he? Yeah, no, he was a gorgeous, gorgeous man and taken from us far too soon. Did he do a lot of photographs? Was, was, did he photograph like us famously Ziggy Stardust? They did half a dozen photos outside in the rain in black and white and coloured them later and that was it. Was this a long <laughs> session? <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, we are talking 50 years ago. I can't <laughs> remember. It probably took longer to put the makeup on than take yeah. the photo. But yeah. I do think it's the most wonderful photo. So anyway, we were commissioned by Vogue to do it. And David was very happy about that. And I was very happy about it. It was going to be the cover, it British Vogue. And then a few weeks later, we heard from British Vogue that the editor, a male editor at Vogue, 
had decided he couldn't put a man on the cover of British Vogue. <laughs> so they were not going to use the photo. And I, I was like, are you insane? <laughs> are you insane? This is one of the biggest stars of the moment. An amazing man. Plus, he's wearing makeup. So you can actually credit him with... <laughs> yeah. If you're worried about credit. But they would not budge. And I said to them, you'll sell more copies of British Vogue than you ever have imagined in your life because you'll get every Bowie fan in the world, you know, mm. buying it. Anyway, mm. they wouldn't. They wouldn't budge. More for them is what I say because Davey said, well, well, don't worry, let them fuff about and I'll put it on the cover of Pinups, which is the album he was recording. So yeah. actually, it's had a, that photograph has had a much longer life because it every has. time Pinups is re-released in another format, there it pops up again. <laughs> yeah, it's a very, it's an iconic image. And so, yeah, well, it's lovely to talk to you and, and, and good luck with the musical, which I know is going down well and runs till mid-November. Yeah, well, we're almost sold out. Lovely to talk to you. We'll finish off with another track from Pin Ups. This, I think, the, in some ways, the first psychedelic pop song, Shapes of Things by the Yardbirds. Thanks, Twiggy. Thanks. Shapes of things before. 